Now, Sonic the Hedgehog has had, like, what? A bazillion games on different platforms, such as consoles, handhelds, arcades, and even fucking watches. If there's something the Sonic franchise is known for, besides all the furry porn, it's the varying degrees of quality each game in the series has. If you look at a franchise like Mario, Mega Man, or Crash, you can sort of break apart the series and find a definitive dark age. Like Crash started pretty great, then went into a dark age for a few years, and is now back to being great again. But with Sonic, it's not that simple. We call the era from Shadow to Unleashed the Dark Age because of what, like, three or four games? I could name that many Sonic games from any era that are fucking abysmal. Sonic has never been a series of consistent quality, good or bad. Sonic and Knuckles was followed by Knuckles Chaotix. Sonic Heroes was followed by Shadow the Hedgehog. Sonic Lost World was followed by Sonic Boom. Both of those eras have some of the worst Sonic games to ever be released, but I don't see anyone calling those the Dark Ages. Sure, let's keep referring to the age where we got games like Sonic Heroes, Sonic Rush, Sonic Riders, Sonic Unleashed as the real Dark Age. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so are there any Sonic games not even Sega would release? Well yes, quite a few actually. From the signs of it, you'd think there were just a small amount of Sonic games that never saw the light of day. Like every Tom, Dick, and Harry knows about Sonic Extreme or Sonic Crackers or Sonic... I extreme but there are quite a few more games that never got released. Some that I haven't even seen mentioned in these cancelled Sonic game videos before. So if you're coming here in the year 2034 and are about to comment about me not mentioning the recently discovered Sonic Maid Cafe simulator, then please make sure to check the date and not be an asshole. With that being said, let's get on to the cancelled Sonic games. One of the earliest cancelled Sonic games was actually not for consoles, instead being made for release on arcades. It was called Sega's Sonic Bros, and would have been a puzzle game designed by Fukio Mitsuji. Mitsuji. Just as a disclaimer, there's like a lot of Japanese names in this script, and I don't... I, I don't... I don't know. I don't, just... I don't know in general. Who is the creator of Bubble Bobble? In the game, you would have had to create lines and loops using different colored Sonics, either getting them across, diagonal, or above. Kinda like Connect 4, except you're fusing Sonic recolors together. This was probably made at a point before Teal's design had been finalized, so all I had to work off was Sonic. It reminds me a lot of the Game Land feature in Sonic Colors, where you could play as multicolored Sonics, and I do like this red one right here. I don't know, he's just got a winning smile and I like him. The game takes you through each level from the original Sonic the Hedgehog, and after completing each you get a Chaos Emerald. It's hard to even consider this game as cancelled, like... They finished it. it. It technically got released. Just not widespread. Sega's arcade games were given a location test before being released internationally to gauge interest, and apparently Sega Sonic Bros. failed that. Because of this limited release, the game was forgotten about until a working PCB was found in 2016, and since then the game has been leaked online in 2018, so at least the game's history has been preserved. But it does bring into question what other Sonic games could have been quietly released and forgotten about to the sands of time. Maybe Sonic Adventure 3 did come out after all. And we just never knew! Next up was a game known as Sister Sonic. Again, this is another one that's sort of in the grey area for whether or not you could consider it as being cancelled. This game was originally a port of the Japanese game Popful Meal, for Sega CD. Instead of releasing the game as it was, I'm assuming they felt replacing the game with Sonic assets and characters would improve sales since the world was still in the state of Sonic Mania. This included replacing the main protagonist of the game with Sonic's sister. Unfortunately, no concept artwork of what Sonic's sister would have looked like has ever surfaced. But it exists somewhere in that Sega fault, and I swear to god someday I'll find it. After fans heard about this, they made it apparent to Sega that they wanted the game as originally intended. And thus, we'd have to wait until 1999 to see what Sonic's sister truly looked like. And Sonic fans have yet again proven that they can always bitch as hard as possible to get what they want. Now, since its release, Sega have ported Sonic 1 onto every computer, TV, and houseplant imaginable. But its first 16-bit port was going to be for the Amiga and Atari ST, with potentially 8-bit ports on the, on the Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, among more. This would have been published by US Gold, who had picked up the rights to port it over to home computers. But due to the success of Sonic, and therefore increase of seals of the Mega Drive, Sega pulled Sonic back in hopes of it being exclusive leads to more seals of their own system. Only two known screenshots of the game exists. This one of what appears to be the title screen, which is very different to the Genesis one, and a screenshot that was shown off in an Italian gaming magazine that gives us a glimpse of how the game would have looked, although it isn't clear if this is actual gameplay or just a mock-up. But that's not the only cancelled port of Sonic 1. At one point, Sega had planned to release updated ports of Sonic 1 and 2 on their new Mega CD add-on. There isn't a lot of definite knowledge as to what this would have been, or why it didn't come to be. Some speculate it would have been the original version of Sonic CD, until Sonic Team split into two to work on both games separately. 
and was thought to have been axed because of Sonic 2's seal figures in Japan. Again, none of this is definite though. It isn't even truly known what the port would have added. Some say it was going to be called either Super Sonic or even Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Escape from Ring Zone, although that was probably just a botched translation. Various sources claim different additions such as CD quality audio, cutscenes between levels, and more stages, possibly the many that were cut from the actual release of Sonic 2. Some people have used this image as footage from Sonic 2 and the Mega CD, and I really don't know where they've got that idea from. I mean, where in Sonic 2 would it make sense for Sonic to be standing on top of a CD 10 times the size of Robotnik? Use your brains, people! Now, I'm sure we all know the story of Sonic 3 at this point. That it was getting too big and was taking too long to develop, so Sega split it into two different games, Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, where you could use lock-on technology to play the complete experience. We got that? Okay, cool. So after that, they had planned to release the two games as one complete Sonic 3, as God intended calling it Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Limited Edition. Ultimately, it was cancelled. I can only assume Sega realised they were already charging double the price for what's essentially one game, and then later releasing it together would have made people feel ripped off, so I can understand why this one was cancelled, although two prototypes were released in 2008. It was mentioned in a couple gaming magazines at the time, and even in the script for Sonic Mars. But I guess that's a story for later on, isn't it? Something that has always confused me was why the characters from the Sonic comics and TV series never appeared in the games besides a small cameo in Sonic Spinball. Like, kids came here for Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, but all they saw was... Cheapy McCheapskate. Well, there was originally an STI tech demo for the Sega Mega Drive, creatively called Sonic 16. It was based off the Sonic's AM series, and would have been a much slower and more story-driven game. Although it was said to have featured some faster segments. Yuji Naka disapproved of the presentation Peter Morwick and John Duggan put together, and was then scrapped. Why can't all these histories be as simple as that? You know what kids love? Sonic. You know what else kids love? Education. That's what Sega assumed at least. Sonic Edusoft was a game for the Sega Master System, developed in 1991 by Teartex. It drops you in a hub world where you can walk around and choose different educational levels to play with Sonic, such as matching letters, finding the word, Addition. It even featured some minigames such as Green Hill, Trampoline, Balloon. Exciting! The ROM was dumped online in 2008, and you can play it right now if you so choose. But why was it cancelled if it were complete? Well, I honestly don't even think Sega greenlit them to make it, and told them to shut that shit down when they find out. And thus, kids around the world would never get the experience of doing schoolwork with their favourite blue hedgehog. Sonic Crackers was an early prototype for what later became the dumpster fire that is Knuckles Chaotix. It featured Sonic and Tails connected by the same elastic rings with the same kind of physics. There are no rings or badniks in levels and was most likely just an engine test. The most interesting part of it is the world fields, where you could work around with an isometric view akin to Sonic Labyrinth. My guess is there was originally going to be a hub world in Chaotix, where you could walk around each attraction to enter stages, but was scrapped because the developers of Chaotix hate fun and probably also babies and sunshine and happiness. Now you're sitting at your computer right now, stomach fat overflowing onto your desk, with your glasses getting fogged up from sweat and heavy breathing. So I think we can all agree. Sports suck. And in the 90s, Sega thought the same thing, as they cancelled a Sonic sports game called... Sonic Sports. In 1995 for the 32X, with the only mention of it being in a game player's magazine, where it mentions that you could play as Sonic, Teals, and Rystar, among other Sega characters, at events such as basketball, volleyball, and soccer. Something else worth noting is that this magazine also mentions the Sega Neptune, which would have basically been a standalone 32X console before being cancelled, because nobody bought a 32X. Moving on. Sonic Ride was a creepy virtual arcade experience that got cancelled because it was created by demons who only goal was to embed this fucking song into the souls of children around the world. Anyone remember the Sega Pico? It was a system that tried to get babies into video games, kinda like a V-Smile. Anyone have a V-Smile or was that just me? Anyways, a handful of Sonic games were released for the Pico. And by a handful, I mean two. Tails and the Music Maker and Sonic's Game World. But a third game called Sonic Jr. was initially planned for the system. They would have featured a younger version of Sonic, similar to what they did with Echo Jr. Now, this game was never officially announced, but Sega did say they wanted to release more games featuring younger versions of their characters. And I think it'd be weird if one of these ones being considered wasn't Sonic. Okay, now here we go. The good shit. These next couple games could just be summed up as being simple mock-ups or concepts that never got very far, and a lot of them did lead into the other, so for the sake of time I'll quickly go over them while getting across the general information. Untitled STI Sonic game was one of the first stepping stones that eventually became Sonic Extreme, 
created by Chris Sen. Now, obviously, this is an actual gameplay, just a mock-up of what the game could have looked like. Funnily enough, this was created before Sonic 3D Blast, and was originally intended for the Sega 32X. The game could have been fun, but if you're going to make a 3D Sonic game that looks like it would have mostly been straight lines, then at that point, just make a 2D Sonic game. In 1995, Peter Morwek, remember him, designed a project known as Sonic Saturn. This would have taken a more realistic approach than the one in Sonic Extreme, but Yuji Naka didn't like it and therefore the project was scrapped. With the only public pieces of concept art being this one of Sonic running across a wooden environment and a badnik idea. Not wanting to lose the work they had done on their engine, they attempted to create a bonus stage for Sonic Extreme, and the Saturn port of Sonic 3D Blast, being Sonic Pool. There are actually quite a few screenshots of how this bonus scheme would have looked, but because of time constraints it had to be cut. Sonic Mars was a concept designed for the 32X in 1994 made by Michael Kozaka, and once again, my man, Chris Sen, who eventually helmed the project after Kozaka's departure from Sega. There are a few pieces of concept art for this game, including an animated title screen concept that was instead titled Sonic on Mars, despite the game supposedly taking place in Sonic's world from the Sad AM show. You got me, I don't know either. More interestingly, there are two animation tests made by Chris himself that showed what he wanted to achieve with the game. And after being shown all these, Yuji Naka <laughs> shook his head and could only say, Good luck. I mean, can you blame the man? It, it looks like Bubsy 3D. But this game didn't entirely disappear, as it eventually evolved into what is now known as Sonic Extreme possibly the most famous cancelled Sonic game of all time. Okay, so there is just there is just too much to go over with Sonic Extreme, and it is such an interesting story that I really want to give it its own video at some point. Just know after Sonic and Knuckles, Sega really didn't want to slow down Sonic's momentum, and after some lame spin-offs, they were tasked with creating the true follow-up to Sonic and Knuckles. This was met with tons of complications, failing demonstrations, struggles to port the game over to the Saturn, having to start from scratch multiple times with different companies being brought in and out of production, developers getting sick from overworking and being threatened with death if they didn't keep it up. Chris tried to work more on the game after cancellation, hoping it could have a PC release, but Sega declined and Sonic Extreme had to stop development, meaning no true Sonic game would appear in the Sega Saturn, leading the console to fail and Sonic to fall into irrelevancy. There is like, where, where more to talk about, but let's move on for now. Did you know that there was going to be a second Sonic X compilation on the Game Boy Advance called Chaos Emerald Chaos that would contain another two episodes? Well, now you do. See, wasn't that so much more simple? When you think about the Sonic games that could use a sequel, what comes to mind? Sonic Rush Adventure, Sonic Heroes, Sonic Pinball Party. Yeah, how about Sonic 06? Sonic the Hedgehog Awakening was in development between 2006 to 2009, and since there was never any definite proof of it existing, it could still be proven to be fake. The only reference to it was a credit on Pete Capella's website, the then voice actor for Silver the Hedgehog. Since it was only credited on his website, it's led fans to believe it would have been a game centered on Silver, possibly a prequel to Sonic 06 showing how his future became the way it did, but was cancelled due to the poor reception of 06. Which is a shame, as since Shadow the Hedgehog we haven't seen any more spin-offs that focus on other characters from the Sonic universe. But I guess when they can't even guarantee a Sonic game will be successful, then there's no point in developing a Vector the Crocodile game. Sonic Extreme, this time spelt correctly, was a prototype created by Visionscape Interactive in 2003, which makes sense as they animated the cutscenes in Sonic Heroes, so after finishing up the work on that game I guess they tried their hand at pitching their own to Sega. This would have been a hoverboarding game that featured Sonic and Shadow skating around a green hill zone-esque area, where you could collect rings, do tricks, and hit boost pads. There was also a mission, combat, and race mode. When discovered on an Xbox development kit and shown in 2011, critics slammed the game for looking predictable and compellingly awful. Like what the fuck dude, they made it in a week, what were you expecting? Just another case of video game journalists having it out for Sonic. Interesting that around the time where this game would have been presented to Sega, for approval, and despite Yuji Naka seeing the potential in it, and wanting to go forward, they declined to pitch, and only two years later announced Sonic Riders, which similarly featured the Sonic gang riding hoverboards. Am I saying Sega declined their idea and proceeded to rip them off? Yes. Now this one I don't get. At E3 2004, Sega showed off a short demo of Sonic running through Seaside Hill from Sonic Heroes. You could rub the screen to make Sonic go faster, and tap it for him to jump over the few platforms it did contain, before telling you to keep an eye out for Sega titles on the DS. This was clearly just Sega affirming their presence on the handheld, not an actual game they planned. I mean, it's got as much depth as a Mario and Sonic Olympics event. So here's a game not too many people have heard of. 
Sonic Origins. That's all I gotta say. Only info I have is that it was a pitch created by Climax for the PSP, and this image here of Seaside Hill was a part of it. Thankfully, much more is known about their second pitch, Sonic the Shadow World. No screenshots for the game exist, I don't believe it even entered development, but we do have a pitch bible that describes Sonic being trapped in the Shadow World, which is the home of Shadow the Hedgehog and, and must escape. I I'm guessing these guys never played Sonic Adventure 2. The game would feature lava and dead trees, and instead of badniks, Sonic would battle creatures. There would have been multiplayer and you could play as Sonic and Shadow. Honestly, this sounds like a bad creepypasta and I'm pretty sure of why Sega declined this pitch. Because of their complete disregard for Sonic lore. Seriously though, it was probably just because they had Sonic rivals in development and didn't want multiple games coming out in the PSP. Nobody likes Sonic 4. If you think you do, you're lying to yourself. Not even Sega liked Sonic 4 when they cancelled the third episode of the series. Sega were projecting losses that year, and cancelled some games because of it. And with the former brand manager confirming the existence of a scrapped third episode, planned from the beginning, it's likely episode 2's reception wasn't what they had hoped for, and therefore the series remained a duology. And finally, Sonic Generations was gonna be on the Wii, DS, and PSP. Likely with their own versions that were scrapped. In favour of its release on the Nintendo 3DS, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. Supposedly an early build of the PSP version was found, but the disc is badly damaged, and the few screenshots the owner has are being kept to himself as he doesn't wish to upset Sega. So yeah, it's probably a hoax. Anyway, that's all the cancelled Sonic games that we know of to date. Do you agree with our picks? Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.